I'm excited to have you, Christy. Thanks for having me, Sarah. Um, so I I actually don't really remember the first time that we've encountered. I feel like it was one of those things, like the whole you marry family hodgepodge of things. Maybe yeah. it was in passing. Um, yeah. Because at the time, you were an RD. D, correct, yes. that you marry for a yes. period of time? Yes, 2013 until uh, 2018. Wow, that's crazy. It feels like a graduate? lifetime. Well, technically I didn't graduate. <laughs> I went for two years and then discerned out because I'm like, I want to stay home with my babies. And Mesa was entering medical school. So, but it was such a cherished time. We love, we love yes. you, Mary. Um, would you, I, I of course know you, but why don't you share with the viewers a little bit about yourself, your family, yeah. kind of, yeah, all the things, if you want to give us a little something. Yeah, thanks. Um, so yeah, I, my name is Christy Holgard. I, um, am a stay at home mom. We have five kids and my husband, Austin works at the University of Mary. And to be honest, I was a little confused when you asked me to speak. So I was like, does she want to know my laundry routine? Like, I, I don't really, I'm not like an expert on right. anything in particular. <laughs> right. But um, yeah, we've lived in Bismarck for over 10 years now. And we really love this community. Um, great friends, great families. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And do you remind me, do you still do your side little business yes, as well? Yes, I do make yeah. jewelry. Yes. yes, Catholic inspired jewelry, we yes. should say. Yes, yes, which is so beautiful. Then yes. Pearl, the pearl and pig. Oh my gosh, I'm terrible. The pearl and the pig. pig. That's yes. what I'm called. <laughs> yeah, I remember it. Like, you've done it for quite a few years now, yeah, right? Yep. Which has been, yeah, so beautiful. I love yeah. all your beautiful yeah, intentional you know, pieces. You can, you can go get your jewelry from Target, but right. you can get your Catholic jewelry from me. Exactly, so. right? Yeah. yeah, for sure. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Remind me, where did both? Where did you grow up in Illinois, oh, or I'm, a little bit? Of a little bit of everywhere. I okay. grew up in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, okay. though. Okay, yeah. and, then and then is Austin from that? He's area? from Dickinson. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, awesome. Yeah. Yep. So him and I met at the University of St. Thomas, and oh, then wow. we moved back here. Yeah, that's in incredible. In 2013, and he's been at the University of Mary since. So. Wow, that yeah. is incredible. Yeah, right. Beautiful. Um. So today, we're talking about a very special person um I think especially in the last couple years her story I think has seen more of the Catholic media attention in a lot of ways especially even the year of 2024 Mm -hmm. um is servant of God Michelle Dupong um which has been you shared with me she has been a huge part of your family um in a lot of ways, an inspiration and in your encounter with her. Yeah. Um. And so how did you first meet Michelle? Like, yeah. how did that come about? Yeah. Um. So Michelle has been such a big part of our family, like you said. And there's like, I feel like our my story with Michelle is when she was alive and I was friends with her. But then after she's died, she's impacted me and my family um, in so many ways. But I first met Michelle. Um, it was in 2013. I had just moved here. I'd never been to Bismarck or North Dakota before. And I was, I got a job at Umeri and I didn't know anyone. So Austin had set up or asked Michelle if she would host a little brunch for us. And she actually, the apartment that she was living in is like four houses away from where I live now. And uh, so, yeah, I went there. um, I got to meet her and a few other ladies. And So that was in 2013, and Michelle died in 2015. So I really only knew her, right, or was it 16? I knew her for two years, and then she was sick the third year that I knew her. Um, So I didn't know her that well, but as I had mentioned to uh, a few days ago, I feel like if you just met her once, you knew her. You knew what she was about. She was so radiant and so welcoming. Um, so even though I didn't know her, or maybe I wasn't the closest of friend, you know, if you wanted to really know more about Michelle, you could ask so many other people, but, but at the same time, if you just met her once, you knew her, you knew what she was about. You knew that Jesus was the most important thing in her life. Um, I'm sure you would see, like you said, if you met other people who knew her, I feel like there'd be so many consistencies with what people had to share about her and the type of person she was. And I think that then shows just how authentic she was to everyone she encountered and how you were important to her in that moment, you know, like she had such a a grace to 
to give of just making you feel like you were the only person in yes. the room, you know? Yes, she truly was. She was a very good friend. She had so many friends, very social. I was just talking to my neighbor who she couldn't remember if she had met Michelle or if she hadn't, but she knew she had been at many events with her and probably had like talked to her uh, maybe in like a small group sort of setting. And same thing. She was like, and I felt like I knew her actually really well, even though I can't actually remember if I was yeah. introduced to her or okay. not. Right. And was she the time that she had hosted a brunch for you? Was she a focus missionary at that time or she had worked? She had worked for the cathedral yeah. for a while yep. at that point. I remember. Yeah. Yep. So she worked for the diocese. The um, Thirst Conference was probably just like an infant growing in her brain at this time. But um so yeah, she would actually walk from her apartment on Rosser. I just imagine her coming up Avenue A and she told me she would pray a rosary. And she's like, if there was only a rosary where you could like clip where you stop, because I don't, I can't say a full rosary on my way to work, mm -hmm. but I can finish it on the way back. And right. I just imagine her, like she had to have come right. up this street and gone down that sidewalk and right. walked to her office. So yeah, that's a beautiful image as yeah. well. And so yeah. with encountering Michelle, meeting her, what was something that like stuck out to you about her that was maybe different from maybe other people, people you encountered, yeah. um, especially within the church? Yeah. Yeah. So Michelle was like so rooted in Jesus. She had such a rich prayer life. And because of that, she was very free. <laughs> like, like she would snort sometimes and she'd <laughs> laugh and you're kind of like, Oh my gosh, Michelle. Right. <laughs> but of course, like it was just, that was just her. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she wasn't like really into like the trends. She always looked very nice and put together, but she like, she didn't care about, yeah. about the what, worries of the world, you know, yes. like in no sense. Yeah. Yeah. She was very free. Um, yeah. And I would see her a lot at gatherings and there was this comfort and I don't really have this with or I didn't have this with anyone at the time. Um, maybe now I do. But if you're going, you know, as a young 20-year-old, if you're going to like a group gathering or a group social, you're kind of like, who am I going to talk to? Right. Or it's how intimidating. Is yes. You know, like you're trying to put yourself out there and trying to find where your place is, you know, where yes. you fit in or, you know, trying to f like that level of comfort. As right. You're saying. Yeah. Right. I still feel today and I'm like, yeah. I've no I know, mom. right? <laughs> right. Yes. It's still, yeah, it's still a thing. But. But I remember like the deep comfort in knowing Michelle was either going to be here, be there, or if I saw her, I knew that, okay, no matter what happens, like I know Michelle will come up and talk to me and I know I'm going to be seen and heard and I'll be able to share myself with someone tonight. Which um, is a desire that's deeply, I think, in us all. We want to be seen. We want to be heard in the sense of, I mean, that's our longing for Jesus, right? Yes. Like, Yes. And how that, in that sense, that it could be, she could live that out to others. Yes. You know, in such an incredible way. Yes. Yes. Michelle also, like, she always said thank you. And reflecting on just her, I'm like, I think that was a daily goal of her, of hers, to, like, <laughs> see how many times she could thank someone That's or incredible. say thank you. I mean, I was like, maybe she felt like she was grasping sometimes with me. Right. She was like... Christy, thank you. I had like a few voicemails uh, on my phone from her. One time, actually, um, it must have been when she was starting to feel ill. She was scheduled to come out to you, Mary, and give a talk. The day of, though, she called me and she had to cancel because she wasn't feeling well. Um, and she was diagnosed just like a month and a half later. Uh, but in the voicemail, it started with, thank you for considering me. <laughs> Thank so you sweet. for, oh, you just are such a good friend, Christy. Also, how, how are your kids? Right, um, so how sweet. is Austin doing? How is, how is life on um, campus? Um, I'm so sorry to tell you that I, I'm not feeling well. I won't be able to come. Michelle, you're not feeling well. You're just <laughs> like going to apologize. <laughs> like, I feel like it's partly one. Well, one, it's, I feel like North Dakota thing of constantly having to like be the last person to like say something or thank you or like the North Dakota nice thing, but also just what a deep, deep sense of gratitude that she exuded yes. that she just like couldn't help but articulate that and just like share that with other people yeah. is 
an incredible gift, honestly. Yes. I wish I had more of that sometimes, and especially in motherhood and all the things. Yes, right. And then to say it to that person, right. you that know. That takes a lot of courage. I feel like it, especially to to share your gratefulness, to apologize is another big one. Like, I feel like we're so timid. Yes. And to, yeah, to, to have that grace is an incredible gift. Yes, for sure. For sure. Michelle nailed it. That's for sure. Um. And so I think, yeah, we were talking about the sense of comfort that she maybe gave you that was, that stuck yeah. out different, like this, maybe this familiarity yes. would maybe be a way to put it if I'm kind of, I'm getting it right there. Yeah, um, for sure. She, I mean, she was a missionary, right? She wanted to reach people. She wanted to see who needed to be heard or cared for. Um she I'm not sure if anyone or if you've seen the focus video on not Michelle yeah I've heard such good things and I want to but I've not yet yes yes I'm trying not to do any spoilers or <laughs> <laughs> incorporate that too much but one one part of that video that I'd never considered although I knew this about her was that she was a gardener she grew up on a farm she had her own garden um so from a really young age she was always invested in growing things and caring for things and if oh weeds got in there or bad things in her garden got in there she had to take care of that but she was always cultivating and I you see that now in her life reflecting on it like she was doing this with people as a focused missionary she wanted them to grow and glorify God um and then as a friend as a as an employee as a community member she wanted to put on events and hold social gatherings she started thirst um and then later when she was suffering and you feel like you know she's stripped of everything who was she cultivating her doctors her nurses she wanted to care for them she wanted even when she was the person that needed the most yes (laughs) yes no no we're caring for you she always was telling them thank you always asking them how they were doing Um, there's a point in the video, uh, where she had received, I mean, like the worst news you could, we can't do anything else. You could go home and be comfortable. And she closed her eyes for a moment and looked at the doctor and said, how are you doing today? And he couldn't contain it. He left the room. He walked out and got control of his emotions again and came back, but never had he seen that in someone where he yeah. delivers the worst news to be received as thank you. And I'm care- how are you doing though? Um, yeah, to, totally special and unique. Right. And to accept such grimsome news with such grace, like to carry your cross so gracefully. And to accept it as it is, you know, like even, of course, like this very objective, terrible thing, such as a a cancer diagnosis, a terminal Mm -hmm. cancer diagnosis, but to realize like this, this is the reality in front of me. And so I accept this with grace because this is my cross I need to bear. And it, it holds purpose. You know, there is, there's purpose in suffering Um, and to still extend that graciousness towards her care team yes. is mind blowing yes. in so many ways of you see so many people, but you know, there's different aspects. And of course, like it, all the emotions, especially in, in a situation such as that, you feel everything, you feel upset, angry, frustrated. Maybe there's times of peace and contentment and all those things, but mm-hmm. just to accept the objectiveness in front of her, this is the reality of what it is. And we're going to move forward. But how are you to take time out of herself, the selfless act of saying, yeah, how are, how are you doing? Like, thank you. That's like, I don't know if I would have the courage to do that. I mean, hopefully, you know, one day, but that is absolutely incredible. And to, to witness, I'm sure I could not imagine also another aspect of like the people with, well, let me backtrack a little bit. When, in terms of Michelle's diagnosis, um, how did you find out about this? What would you, 
Yes, Do you I remember, remember what you were doing, yes. where you're at, kind of what your reaction yes. was towards that? Yes, yes. So um, Michelle and I had started a Bible study with a group of ladies. We called ourselves Eremus, which means let us pray in Latin. It was actually the name of the study we did, and so we just took it oh. and <laughs> kept calling ourselves that. <laughs> there was some wine included, right, but uh, <laughs> so there was like, Maybe 15 of us that we started together regularly, even though we did other studies, not just Oremus. And Michelle emailed us. It was almost a year to the date before she died. I was, we were visiting family for Christmas. And um, it was an email to all of our group that um, she had been struggling with this pain, which is when I realized, like, oh, she was supposed to come talk to my group. And she couldn't, like, that's probably what, what was up, going on. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so by this point, she knew it was uh, severe cancer. They said a few months. Um, but, yeah, she made it a whole year. Uh, I, first, I was, like, honestly, I was kind of mad. I haven't told that to anyone, but I was mad at her <laughs> because, once later, I had found out that she'd been, like, struggling with some things for a while. And and I'm like, did she go into the doctor enough? Did she get enough second opinions? Yeah. Um, you know, because I had heard, like, maybe at first, like, she thought it was, like, a digestional, like, you know, I'm going to cut out gluten and see how this goes. Um, like, gosh, what if we would have found out, like, six months ago? Um, Always the, yeah, the what if or should have, could have, would have questions that flood your mind in instances like this when you, yeah, you hear, I mean, downright you can call it this terrible news. Terrible is, news. I mean, if that's probably a nice way of putting it yeah. in a lot of ways of, yeah, there's, there can definitely be frustration. Yeah. Um, right. But like, I like, I uh, hesitate to say that I was mad because like her suffering, like you've said, it was redemptive. And I'm willing to bet that the closest she ever felt to Jesus was that year that she suffered. And so, like, who am I to be mad at her Hopefully. for experiencing, like, so much redemption, so much time for sacrifice, and the closeness to our Lord? I'm sure she knew that she was going to die when she did. Um, yeah. I think the little blurb on the back of the January Jane shop thing with her picture on it it said that she had told one of her sisters that I'm gonna die on Christmas and she knew you know and I'm sure when the doctor said there's nothing else we can do I'm sure she just she knew and and that year of suffering was um an opportunity for her to cling to Jesus and be close to him um so once she was uh you know, like she got a lot of treatments. Um, she wasn't in Bismarck a whole lot after that. I didn't really see her a lot. Um, she had so many friends, so many close friends, lots of family who wanted to see her. They threw a benefit for her. Um, yeah, a few months before she ended up dying. I wasn't able to make that. I was really bummed that that didn't work out. Um, I can't remember the last time I saw her. It was probably shortly shortly after she was diagnosed, um, but yes, we did go to the funeral. In fact, at the the focus video, I brought my kids to that, and my oldest daughter was like, "Oh my gosh, look at all those priests at that funeral! It's so cool to go to a huge funeral like that." And I was like, "Uh, you were there actually. <laughs> She's like, you were a baby." <laughs> She's like, "No way!" She was like, no way. Her so little good. mind was just blown. Yeah, yeah. in yeah. ways that Michelle had impacted her life yes. with maybe not even knowing how concretely she impacted it in so yes. many ways yes yeah, that's incredible and yeah it, I know I'm like I'm sure I'm sure Michelle held you she probably yeah. held a few of you yeah and uh just today my one of my daughters was like what's the best part birthday party you've ever had I was like I had this one it was fun actually Michelle Dupont was there and they were like what <laughs> my blood like, yeah isn't that great? She's just like woven in our life a little bit. Right. Her these house little is just right over there. Right. All <laughs> these little like anecdotes, these little seeds that you see her through. It makes me, when you had said about your oldest with the scene of the funeral and just how many priests were there, how many people were there. 
It makes me go back to what you'd said about her in the garden and cultivating, and she was doing that in her own life. And it made me think with my father passing away this last this last year from a battle with cancer and just reflecting on Michelle's life and the similarities of things of you see that community, even in the short life that Michelle had lived, the fruit of that with people yes. praying for her, offering people who don't even know her praying for her, people who she encountered coming to her bedside, offering meals, offering comfort and the priests in our diocese, you know, offering healing sacraments, maybe not necessarily in the, the physical way of what everyone hoped for, for a miracle, but in the ways that both she needed spiritually, but also the graces received from that for her parents, for her family, that they don't even realize how it greatly impacted. And that's something, yeah, it just kind of made me reflect on that, especially with my own dad of, yeah, praying for a miracle, hoping that something would happen. But how (laughs) beautiful of a gift it is to so openly bear someone's cross with them Mm -hmm. like even in a small ounce of the way of whether it's just sitting with them at their bedside like yeah I just have vivid yeah images of my sitting with my dad and praying divine mercy chaplets and people who have done who would do that in Michelle's home with her her parents or people just offering masses for her that yeah again don't even know her or had encountered her briefly whatever it may be how greatly of an impact and the fruition of that cultivation of pouring into people and you know when you love Jesus truly love him and you've had an encounter and you intimately know him mm-hmm. you can't help but share him like he's every yes. aspect of who you like just like your kids when the birth of your you know your own child is born or you're newly married you want to show out from the rooftops yes. like you can't contain that excitement and it's the same thing when you when you know and you love Jesus and I feel like just from what you're saying is like, that's how Michelle was. She had so much deep intimacy with the Lord yes. that she couldn't contain it. Even if it maybe wasn't directly sharing or, you know, giving a gospel invitation, whatever it may be, that she could just, others could encounter Christ through her yes. and be a vessel. I think that's something I've noticed with what you're sharing and how beautiful yes. that is. Yes. And even when she was confined to the hospital, those few months she would minister to the other patients. Sometimes they were not as like <laughs> receptive. Like she was suffering more probably or she was, you know, her cancer was more progressed than theirs. And yet she was ministering to them. Um or her yeah, and wow. like we've said the hospital staff, her doctors who weren't sometimes even Catholic, um, she wanted to minister to them and to uh care for them. Yeah, yeah care for their incredible. soul. That's incredible. Yeah. And so we maybe briefly kind of had touched on it too, but was there anything with watching your friend suffer through cancer? And like, what was it like to watch her suffer and then eventually um, come to her day of death on Christmas? Was yeah. there anything that kind of, yes, stood out to you? Or what was it like from, from your point of view? Yeah. Well, like I said, I, she was kind of removed um, when she was like further on in her um, battle. One thing that was really precious to me was the caring bridge um, that Renee, her sister did. I feel like we all read that religiously and, you know, if there was a new post, we would, you know, send word to our friends that there's a new post out there. Um, And yeah, it all worked out that Renee actually had that year off. She was in between jobs and she could care for Michelle. So she was with her on the daily basis and could provide these updates. Um, yeah, it, you know, the first few months you're like, Michelle doesn't even look like she's suffering. Like she looks, she's radiant actually. And she was going to die six months later. Um, towards the end, you know, closer to Christmas, she was jaundiced really bad. Um, had lost a lot of weight, just keeping food down was hard. Um, those natural progressions that kind of happen with a diagnosis such as that. Yeah. And it's hard to, someone you deeply care about or, you know, whether you intimately know them or not, it's just, it's hard to watch that, you know, like it just, it hurts in a lot of ways. Yeah, Um, it does. Yeah. But in the same way, like 
a lot of our friends who did get to see her or spend time with her, they knew that that was the last time probably. And those moments were so special to them and so dear. One of uh, the ladies that I knew, um, she got to go see Michelle um, in Haymarsh. And it was like late into the fall, but it was one of the last warm, sunny days, those precious days that we Mm -hmm. get here in North Dakota. And they got to just sit on the prairie hill and I think they even like rolled down the hill (laughs) or something and um yeah she was like that it felt like little girls just frolicking through the prairie and uh you know normally if you heard that like two grown women (laughs) you're like skipping through the grass you'd be like okay anyway (laughs) like like, okay but uh yeah that's how like how childlike of a joy she had I yeah. Think, yeah. Even though she was months away, weeks away, really, at that point yeah. from dying. Yeah. Yeah. Very special. Incredible. And so, what has it been like for your families or maybe other families that you've witnessed um, in, our, in the community since she's been named Servant yeah. of God? What has that yeah, been like for you guys and yeah. maybe others you've known that they've shared with you and. Yeah. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah. This is one thing that I've been so grateful for with Michelle. I only had a couple years with her. Um, but you know, like the saints are these people in, in heaven and we didn't know them. In fact, I was thinking the first time I saw a saint's grave, I had to like get on a few different airplanes, <laughs> cross an ocean. I was right. an adult and I got to see one in Italy, you know, and uh here she is her grave is just an hour away um but so so these saints are these these people in heaven and we have stories and legends of them and we kind of can imagine what they're like and they have you know they're the patron saint of something so we like throw that in there too and then we sort of like relate that to us and like how how that makes how that affects me and that changes me so turn that into here's this girl this like super normal girl (laughs) and she was living she was walking that you know these streets she like saw those sunsets she lived in this building it just looks like your normal apartment building um she's a saint she's not you know you think of saint catherine and saint Teresa and therese and and michelle's with them and um and yeah that I think that has given, you know, some of my friends who have families and they never met Michelle, that's like deeply confirming to what we are all trying to do here in this community. So Michelle had normal parents. They were doing the best they could with what they had. They were trying to raise their kids in the faith. They had a farm. They received the sacraments and taught their kids how to pray. Gave them the, the lifelines and the foundation. Yes. They, yeah, you said with the resources they had and all those things. And she's. And one of them's a saint now. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah. So it's like, it's deeply confirming because that's all, that's all what we're doing. We're all trying to um, do the best we can too. You're like, I, I am in that same situation. My kids seem pretty normal. And, <laughs> and yet, yeah, one of them. Michelle's a saint, it, not officially named yet, obviously, um, but uh, but it makes me, it confirms that what I'm doing on a daily basis, even the mundane things, are actually like singing the praises of God, that these are actually really important things. Teaching my kids to pray, you know, sitting down as a family, praying before dinner, sharing if we have any intentions to pray for. These are actually really important things. These are the normal, basic things. Um, I also have reflected on how, like, as a modern Catholic, we have so many resources. This podcast is one of them. Um, So many books out there, so many um, great speakers and great priests. And I sometimes feel like I have to flex every catholic muscle in my body to like do all of them to like make sure we listen to all of them and make sure that my kids do all of them and i can lose sight of the fact that those are just their tools they're meant to help me they're not necessarily a task list um that's and, a really yeah that's a really good 
<laughs> and I feel like Michelle is proof that like just the basics are good. They're really yeah. good. They're praying, learning how to pray, learning how to discern your vocation and receiving the sacraments. If you do those really well, yeah, you could be a saint. Um, gosh. Yeah, and just how that, that's been the tradition for centuries. Um, the, you know, she had said too that uh, in one of her talks, she's like, I am not up here because I have a PhD in Catholic studies or philosophy or theology. I'm here talking to y'all because I love Jesus and I know him and I want you guys to meet him too. Um, so yeah, I just, I love how normal she is, how accessible she is, how just like a real person she is to us. We see, um, there's a picture of her in the video. Um, she's outside, uh, like on a hike or something, somewhere in North Dakota. It's clear it's in North Dakota. And my, ki- my kids were like, we've been there? I'm like, probably, because that's anywhere. Like, right. that's just like down the street, probably. <laughs> that, like, looks like it. Like, yeah, you you got to see those same horizons, those same sunsets. Um, you are, you're living a life actually really similar to Michelle, whether you realize it or not, and you could become a saint too. She was right here among us from our our community you yeah you brought up a lot of a lot of great aspects and one of the things that you had said that I loved was one just the basics like just the foundation of yeah teaching your kids how to pray your intentions having you know going to mass and even if maybe your kids aren't old enough to receive some of the sacraments being a witness to them in your marriage or all these things of those are the foundation and that's what's important and how, yeah, all these great and beautiful resources that we do have, like every podcast, every, you know, like YouTube channel, every book, whatever it may be that we have underneath our tool belt, if we need it, is there, but it's not a task list. And I feel like sometimes I can get in the mindset of I need to do all these things or I need to be, I, you know, like need to feel like I am qualified in this area and the whole aspect of like, yeah, she didn't, like, I don't have a philosophy degree. I don't have a Catholic studies degree or a PhD in this or that or whatever it may be that, yeah, as long as you do what's asked of you and you, you know, just like the basics of the, the mundane of mm-hmm. keeping the sacraments well practiced in your home. Yes. And, you know, prayer because it's your relationship with Christ. Like, that's what is, what is vital. Yes. I feel like, I feel like Michelle just, loved Jesus so much that she wanted to be with him and praise him and go to adoration. And I feel like for me, I, I'm like, I want to love Jesus more. So I'm going to like do these things. <laughs> right. And I'm sure it certainly isn't harmful. It's always helpful, but yes, yeah, like starting at the source that we go to Jesus right. first and most importantly. And I also love of how you had shared with your your children about yeah she was right here like the mundane and she lives a very similar life that you have and you talk about how yeah all these great and beautiful saints the church has given us and yeah you hear about maybe saint Therese or saint catherine or you know whoever is maybe your patron saint for your own life i think sometimes it's easy and it's very normal to feel like there's maybe this disconnect because like whoa 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 they're a saint like there right. is something, there's a, you know, in a, yes. I don't know if a, a gap is a lack of a better way to explain it. Yeah. But when you see someone Michelle, like Michelle, who has lived such a joyful life of gratitude, um, and I mean, very fitting to serve God, servant of God, to see her strive towards something to attain that, it just reminds you of how much of a reality that we are. All are called to sainthood, whether we realize it or not. Maybe yes. not in a can- like recognized in church in terms of canonization, but when you get to heaven, you're a saint. You're perfected in Christ, and we all are called to attain that, whether it's official canonization or not. Right. You know, and it's not. It's something that is um, hard, 
and it, you have to roll up your sleeves and you have to put in the work to do it. And it's not going to be easy. There's going to be times of trials and suffering and joy and gratitude and all these things that naturally come with the life of the faithful. But it is attainable, whether yes. we realize it. And how beautiful of such a, a close witness to your own family and your kids. Like, what a special gift for yeah. them, you know, yeah. even at a young age to see that I think is, is yeah. really beautiful that you don't, you don't get that every day. Yes. You don't get that every day. I know you wonder what it, I think of that, like when they go to college and hopefully not too far, but <laughs> you know, if they do go to like another state, they'll probably just be like, well, yeah, we had a servant of God, just like, she's my mom's friend. Like that's going to blow people's mind. Mm-hmm. They, It's such a treasure and I should do a better job at reminding them that like this isn't everywhere there's only like a handful in our country you're one of the lucky ones yes lucky for sure um what you were saying reminded me of uh the church I someone had mentioned this to me that um well there's lots of saints that aren't canonized and the reason that the church does canonize saints I'm probably not getting this totally right but it's more or less boiled down to that it's helpful for the people that we're going to hold this person up. A, we've confirmed that they are in heaven through that process. But this saint is meant to be a good example of someone you can follow. And so, you know, like her family and close friends will say, like, we don't need a canonization to know she's in heaven. Like, yes, mm-hmm. she was, like, so holy. But that the church sees her life as one to to hold up and to make public and to go through with a fine tooth comb all the little details like all of the possible ways that she might have done things wrong they think her life is worthy of that the church is saying look at this girl look at what she did and thankfully for us we don't have to look very far (laughs) we can just go down the street see her grave in fact we um my family and I have gone every summer to go see her grave. It's, yeah, cool. it's not far. We went on the day that Bishop named, um, that opened her cause on campus. It was during new staff training, so there's hundreds of focus missionaries. And my husband had cued me in that uh, that this will be going on. You should come out to campus, hop on the bus. And it was so windy. Well, and my little. That North Dakota prairie wind, <laughs> yeah. you know, will get you. Yeah. yeah. So we're like, I have my like newborn baby. We're sitting on a bus. I'm like, oh my gosh, I really should have her in a car seat. And we're sitting next to the doors of the bus that oh, are like shaking, flapping yeah. open. I'm like, my baby's going to fall out <laughs> onto the highway. But Michelle's got us. So we're good. Yeah, we're fine. And yeah, so I mean, the caravan was like a mile long. It, it was like cars. Because it cars. was a big thing that every, a whole bunch of people were going yeah, out just from hundreds. the diocese. It was like a huge diocese yes. thing. Yes. I remember this. Yep. Yes. All the focus missionaries. Yes. It was huge. So we went out and we prayed um, at her grave. Her family, uh, they were surprised by us. They found out like shortly before we got there that the cause was opened and that we were coming. So it was so windy that my little baby could not handle the wind. And a van had pulled up to the St. Clement's gates. And they said, hop in with us. And it was for sure one of her sisters. And it might have been her mom or a relative. Um, but, yeah, I got to finish the rosary on the day that her cause was opened in the van with them. And it was really special. So my kids, uh, like, loved that experience. They got into, you know, Focus had, like, a photographer. She was, like, hanging out the window on the highway That's taking so pictures. Funny. and. Uh, so my kids got in like some of these pictures and it, yeah, it was really, really precious, but they, they love going out there. And so just north of Haymarsh is Beulah and there's a water park at Beulah. So we just do both of these things. <laughs> we, Michelle's like so, the yeah, cherry. Deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to the water park. They have a great family rate that we can get in for cheap. And then That's we incredible. stop and see Michelle. And so. The last time we were there, my four-year-old son thought that when we pulled up to the cemetery, he thought we were at the water park. So he got out of our van, and he's got, like, his swim trunks on, he's holding his floaty and his goggles That's on his incredible. head. And he was like, he's ready to go. Where's, the, where's the water slide, Mom? <laughs> he's like, this is not it. Yeah. I was like, what in the world? Great. The first time I saw a saint's grave 
I had to go so far out yeah. of my way and now you're like at I her know. grave expecting you know, a water that's going to be a story for the future when he gets older and he can tell his kids God really that it's just it's something funny you yes. know you need to frame that one and yes put it on the wall. yes I know I do I need to get that I got the St. Clemens in the background that's so it's sweet so, yeah. and was the first time you visited Michelle's grave that day the when it had been opened when you were going with you yeah. Mary? okay uh, gosh that's a good question I might have gone right before that okay um I think I think we were going to Medora or something and we had some time so we passing, stopped because yeah. I remember telling some of the the focus missionaries that like the part the you know where the cemetery is and the little you'll say New, New Salem Susie or you yeah there, yeah and that's what you know yeah, it's so beautiful yeah. it's it is worth a stop and to go to her grave and, and I don't know since she it had been opened but I actually went in 2018 okay. um, to a, well, her parents had made their farm a retreat center. Okay. I don't know if you knew about that, but they, oh. for, I don't know how many years they did it, but our, when I was involved in the focus at you, Mary, for one of our spring um, things that we did with all the focus chains is we all got to go to the Dupong farm and we spent the night there. We helped with chores. We had mass at the church we got to visit her grave and it was just and her parents had shared about Michelle's life and it was so beautiful that they had yeah taken on this mission to then create a retreat center for others to be invited and I don't know if they do it now I mean that was like five six years ago almost now um but it was such a gift that they had so you could you know live you could walk right where Michelle grew up and where she attended to their animals and her garden and all those things. It was, yeah, such a beautiful, beautiful gift to witness that and her family to be so generous in that way that um, they knew there was something. I mean, they already know you're, you're, they're your kid, you know, and they th- you think they're someone special, but they really knew deep down that something was yes. so incredible about so, her. And so, yeah, yes. not, I couldn't quote for sure if that's something they still do since then, but I know it's been a gift to a yeah, lot of people. They've certainly been generous welcoming people to pick berries and, um come visit them we had someone had given us uh june berries i think from um their uh vineyard and have you i'm not sure if you've seen drinking with the saints that book yes yes i got my um father-in-law that book <laughs> nice. so i was like oh i need to add one for michelle because i got these berries so we like, soaked them in everclear i think and then made <laughs> some simple syrup and it was the prettiest red color drink it tasted like a jolly rancher <laughs> That's and incredible. so we would have people over and I would tell them, you know, this is Michelle Dupong's like saint drink. drink. Are that's these incredible. Juneberry cello thing. That's so sweet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, just like those sweet, those sweet little memories you can have to reflect back on or yes. come to you as your kids ask it. Um, love to ask you one more question before we wrap up. Lay it here. on me, Sarah. <laughs> so, yeah, kind of all in all talking about Michelle's um, encounter with you and the impact she had on your and your family's life, what virtue do you think Michelle best exemplified um, in your perspective? And how did she express that you think from, yeah, from your point of view? Yeah. I think, I think Michelle had a gift. What I saw of doing the right thing always like making good decisions regularly. Um, is that prudence? Yeah. Is that, yeah. I like the prudence. Yeah. Um, I'm sure she was just always weighing the things. And, you know, to me, it looked like it probably came so natural. Her, like, saying thank you. <laughs> your, kids your kids the, agree. Yeah, my kids are in the background just cheering. For... <laughs> uh, but I'm sure, you know, as she got older that she really honed in on this and it became easy. But. I felt like she was always, always doing the right thing. And it was like, it was easy for her. You know, I would think of something like, oh, well, this friend just had a baby. Maybe like I should bring them a meal. Oh, Michelle has already got the meal train set up. It became a, a reflex, you know, yes. I feel like in so many ways that it just maybe from your point of view, I don't know if I'm getting this correct, but like it just felt like it came natural and maybe yes. because she had put it into practice. So, I mean, I feel like that's, Yes. And we all need a little bit more of that in our life of like, I just need to, you know, 
be attentive to the ways the Holy Spirit is prompting me. Yes. And the more often you hear and are attentive to that, the more the Holy Spirit invites you in. And then the easier it is to hear the Lord's voice and to that then becomes a reflex of just yes. natural. Of yes. Doing that. I don't know if that makes yeah, that sense. For sure. And I, I think other people notice that too. Like I think a lot of our friends went to her for help or help help me navigate this situation because I can't quite see all the details. She knew she knew what questions to ask. Um, she knew all the things to consider. Um, she really was a mentor to a lot of people. A lot of people were drawn to her um, in this way. So, yeah, I think uh, she certainly was like a, had many gifts and very virtuous and had the courage and fortitude to uh, do all of them. But, yes, I think she had a gift of doing the right thing, making the right decisions. Um, acting carefully and yes, keeping Jesus as her number one. That's incredible. Well, I appreciate you coming and sharing Michelle's in- impact on your and your family's life and how she's been woven. And that's just, it's so incredible to, even through our own life and our Mason I's marriage, to kind of see how she's greatly impacted other people or in ways in my own life that I didn't even realize yeah. in so many ways. And um, what a, tangible witness um yes. to all these things of yeah she's just a north dakota gal yes. like you and me and yes. we can achieve sainthood it's um not as far off as we think it is in a lot of ways yes. and so sure um i appreciate you coming and sharing yeah. all that Love and me too. yeah servant of god michelle dupont pray for us yes. thank you